right, you guys, welcome back to Taking Flight with me, Mike Rocket Blackstone here. Uh, today I'm gonna shake it up for you and, and go into some detail work for you on the Marchetti SF260. And um, we actually have a great opportunity uh, for those of you who are interested in reading about it, I'm gonna put a link down below. Um, the Marchetti SF260 in July of 2000 was on the cover of AOPA. Awesome six page spread, put that for you so you can kind of read about this airplane. Raving about the Marchetti SF260 and I will do the same. Actually raving about the Marchetti is very easy to do. Uh, I must be one of the highest time Marchetti pilots in the country, possibly the world, that has been flying them for literally 30, 34 years. Uh, I soloed in this airplane at 16, licensed in it at 17, flew many, many missions in this airplane for Air Combat USA over the next 25, pretty much 25 years from that point on. Um, this airplane is a gem and I have a model of it right here. This isn't exactly a uh, perfect scale of it, but it's pretty close. Uh, handmade wooden model of the Marchetti SF260. And what I love about the airplane is how closely it resembles the, the wing design and the shape of the P-51 Mustang, but in a two seat configuration side by side versus the, the tandem seat. And what that, what that does for you, when you fly side by side in a Marchetti, the PIC, the pilot in command flies it from the right seat, not the left, but the PIC flies it from the right. And the reason is, is all fighter airplanes, you fly with the right hand on the stick and the left hand on the throttle. And when you fly in a in a side-by-side -side seating configuration like this, the throttle quadrant is in the center. So you've got your throttle moving on the, the outboard, the prop control moving in the center, and then the fuel control or the fuel cutoff um, mixture control on the, the inboard of you. So the pilot needs to be able to fly it with, the, with his right hand or her right hand and be able to do, manipulate the engine controls with the left and then the fuel selector is right below the throttle quadrant as well, which is super important. So th that's the primary reason that the pilot in command flies it from the right. And then of course, all of the, the instrument stack is on the right in the, in the Marchetti uh, SF260 1988 model, which you see uh, in this video that's coming up here, you'll see it has an Aspen uh, attitude indicator and HSI on the right for the, for the PIC and a 530W on the left for the primary nav display as well as a uh, the primary radio and then a KX-155 secondary radio and the intercom up on top to select which radio you're using. From the right seat, that's where I reach up and grab the, the gear handle is straight below the, the eyebrow or the, the, the dashboard, if you will. That's where I reach up for that with the left hand after takeoff and then the flap control is near there as well, shaped like a flap, I'll show you where that is as well. So. From the right seat, you can reach everything. You can fly it solo from the right, and you should. When you're learning to fly it, you fly it in the left seat, and it's totally dual control. So the, the right stick and the left stick are totally interconnected. The rudder pedals on the right side and the rudder pedals on the left side, totally interconnected with brakes on both sides, which, which is awesome. They have Cleveland brakes on the airplane, which are very, very effective. Um, so when I fly it, I keep my toes really low on the pedals so we don't get a hold of too much brake. Um, or at any break at all while you're taxiing it or while you're taking it off so you don't uh, inadvertently skid a tire, which is easy to do. Um, the Marchetti is fast. This might be one of the fastest single engine piston airplanes ever made. It weighs about 2,200 pounds. It grosses out at 2,430 pounds. That's its, its heaviest weight uh, that it's, it's legal to fly at. With a 0540 six cylinder Lycoming engine up front and a two bladed Hartzell propeller, okay? And this one, the 1988 that you're seeing is a fuel injected version of the Marchetti. We have several fuel injected and several carbureted. I kind of prefer the, well, for different reasons. I kind of prefer the carbureted one. It's easier to get started, easier to operate. Uh, the fuel injected is kind of nice. It maybe burns a little bit cleaner and a little bit more power, but I, I don't know, I could fly either one of them, it's almost exactly the same. Fuel injected might be just a touch more tricky to start when it's hot. That's the only thing I could say on that. Um, moving on to the speed of this thing. So I fly it, I tend to fly it at around 170 knots. In the article and in, in several of the spec sheets, they're talking this thing maybe does it close to 180 to 190 knots. I, I haven't really seen 190 true. Uh, I tend to do my flight plan around 170 knots to be conservative. I might get 175 out of it. 
and the fuel. The fuel, the primary fuel uh, sources are the inboard tanks. So we take off and land on the inboard tanks. I'll almost always take off and land on the left main tank and select the left main tank for taxi and takeoff. Once airborne, I'll switch to the, the tips if I have any tip fuel at all. And the, the tips are where all the range is in this aircraft. So these thing, this thing carries 60, about 61 gallons of fuel, 18 in each tip, 12.7 in each inboard. So you're cruising along in this thing. If you take off with full gas, you can fly along for approximately two hours and 45 minutes, maybe three hours on the tips, then go to the right inboard, burn that one down for 45 more minutes, and then when you switch to the left main, you should be in the, in the pattern to land. I'll typically flight plan about a 500 nautical mile trip just to make this smooth and easy, and I can do that in about three and a half, maybe four hours. They're talking about 1,100 mile range. I've never seen any range that long in the airplane. I believe they might be talking about if it has uh, external fuel tanks hanging from the wings, possibly. This airplane is also configured with with, with bomb racks, if you will, uh, out, external weapon stores out here on the wings that can carry, it says in, in, the, in the article, and 660 pounds of external stores. Um, so like 330, like a two 250 pound bombs it could easily carry on the outboard uh, of the wings here. Also four and three quarter inch, I believe, uh, like Zuni rockets under each wing and a minigun, like a little miniature machine gun under each wing, which is pretty awesome. So this aircraft is really designed to be a light attack fighter and a trainer. So it's a great pre-jet airplane. It flies a lot like a jet. It's, it's fast. It's got a very thin wing as you, as you take a look at it as, as we walk around the thing. The wing is very thin, which allows it to go really fast but it also doesn't make a lot of lift, so you'll find it's, it, it, it reaches its critical angle of attack or a little bit of a, of a rumble and a buffet like a jet wing does. As we start to pull that nose up, if we start to put some G on this airplane, we start to reach that critical angle of attack, we'll start to feel the rumbling of a buffeting in the, in the, uh, in the wing root area as the airplane's starting to, to reach the stall. Right? And this happens every time you pull back on the stick, as you reach that critical angle of attack on the wing, you'll feel the airplane starting to rumble just like a jet does. If you continue to pull that, just rumbling just gets a little worse. So we fly the Marchetti a lot like we fly a jet. So honoring the buffet, gentle pulls, pop up, center the stick, hard over with the stick, and the airplane rolls about as fast as the P-51 Mustang does, just about 90, maybe 100 degrees per second. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, something like that is about the roll rate of the Marchetti. It's rated at plus six and minus three Gs. So what that means is as, as we approach our, our maneuvering speed of 162 knots or greater, the airplane now has enough energy and enough speed on it to put up to six Gs on it. If you're, if you're pushing 180 to 220, the red line on the airplane is 236 knots. You start exceeding 180 to 220 or 30 knots, you have much more energy on the airplane than it would need to pull more than six. So you gotta be really careful on the pulls not to over G the airplane from a high speed, high, uh, high G onset and you could easily, easily over G, you got enough energy to do so. So smooth and gentle on the pull, pulling up to, it's designed G load limit is about 4.4 Gs at high gross weight. So as you start pushing above um, 20, uh, 200 pounds or so, you're in the 4.4 G window there, and you're not gonna wanna pull more than about 4.4 Gs when you're, when you're heavyweight at all, okay? The only time you'll display a plane will ever pull six Gs is if you were solo, super light on gas, and doing an air show. Other than that, you're probably gonna wanna fly it in about the four uh, to four and a half G range, maybe 4.7 Gs, okay? All right, so, so that's its, its design beauty like the magic of it is super precise aileron control super light on the elevator super light on the ailerons flies really balanced it has a trim in the center uh console just to straight below the throttle there's a trim wheel for the elevator trim which you can trim out very precisely so the airplane will fly really nicely and maintain an altitude almost exactly and then we balance the the ailerons of this airplane with Fuel, so uh, I don't have any, any trim for the ailerons. So if I have any tip fuel at all and the airplane is starting to pull a little left, I'll burn the left tip until 
we actually get it nice and light, and then I would switch to the right tip and balance it that way so we can get really precise aileron control by balancing fuel. If there is no tip fuel, I would not mess around with that too much. So what I would do is I'd take off with the left inboard, go to the right inboard fuel tank and burn that all the way down until I get to, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes of fuel remaining in the right uh, tank, and then I'll come back and land on the left inboard. So on shorter missions, that's the way I would handle it. I would not balance the fuel on short missions, but on long missions with fuel sitting out in the wingtips, it's, it's when you would actually use that, that feature. All right, so that is uh, its primary basic general envelope of the Marchetti. Taking off and landing the Marchetti is awesome. This airplane, when you see it sitting on the ground, it sits tail low. And take, you take a look at the pictures of it. You can see that it kind of squats tail low like this. And the, the nose extends quite a lot. And it, and it almost taxis like a tail dragger. And this is because the Marchetti was designed to be flown off of unimproved strips, dirt strips, like in, in African third world countries. The Philippines use this airplane a lot uh, as well. They're a major holder of a lot of Marchettis uh, for their, their air force. And the airplane flies a lot off of dirt strips and unimproved strips and sitting tail low like this provides for adequate propeller clearance so that you're not sucking dirt straight into the propeller as you're taxiing around. If you were to lower the nose down to where the airplane taxi flat like this, there is, there's about a foot of clearance between the propeller and the dirt and high power settings would, would, would put a tornado of, of rocks and debris straight into the prop, which isn't good for it at all. So You'll notice it, it rides tail low, and if you look at the propeller on our Marchetti, it's hardly pulling up any rocks doing this. This is really a, uh, it's a prop uh, conservation feature, I believe. It, it, it does beautiful that way. Then, that is actually the takeoff attitude, right? So, we taxi the plane around without using the brakes. We get out on the runway. We add power. This airplane has a lot of horsepower. So as we add horsepower, up to 260 brake horsepower, that causes the airplane to slowly accelerate and starts to pull left during the takeoff roll. So what do you do? You press the right pedal, not the brake, but the right pedal, just enough to steer that nose wheel over, get the plane on the center line, begin to accelerate. As you get to about 60 knots, you lift the nose wheel off the ground and fly off nice and flat like this. Get airborne with the flaps at at half, flaps 20, get airborne. Once the airplane's airborne, we ease forward on the stick to begin accelerating, get, get a nice positive rate, get a 90 knots, gear up, positive rate, gear up, accelerate to maybe 100, flaps come up, then take those half flaps to clean, and then accelerate to 110, nice and flat on the climb. The book says it can do about 1,700 feet per minute rate of climb. I tend to see about 1,000, maybe 1,100 feet per minute in the climb. I kind of go flat and I want to keep the airplane moving fast for cooling. That's the way I do it. Um, get up to altitude, power comes back to 25 inches of manifold pressure, RPM comes back to um, 2,500, and leave the mixture rich. We just keep the mixture rich for cooling, get up to altitude, and then maybe, maybe lean the mixture as you get above 2,500 feet or so, just a, a couple of clicks back. All right, so that's how the, uh, the Marchetti takes off. Landing it is an amazing airplane to land. Swooping in and coming into land, um, the airplane will glide at 90 knots, and uh, it's got a very low gear speed. So the way the flaps and the gear extend on the downwind after we do, say, an overhead brake, which would be come over the, the runway at, at 1,500 feet or 1,000 feet if we can get it, brake over the top of the field, 160 to 190 knots, brake, pull the airplane around the corner to the downwind, slowing down to 120, 125 is the max flap speed, Flaps come out to half, so to flaps 20. Pitch the nose up to slow down to 105. Max, flap, max gear speed is 108, so 105 or less. Gear down, full flaps. Running it down to flaps 40, the airplane will come down nice and steep, maintaining 90 all the way in. If I need to control the speed a little bit more in this configuration, I'll use a little bit of right rudder with the left wing down like this. A little right rudder, a little forward slip we call it, and the airplane will come down nice and steep. Another article I, I might direct you to here is uh, teaching anyone to land a pits. I, I fly the Marchetti a lot the way the fly, I fly the pits. So left wing down, top rudder, and uh, we come down nice and steep like I would fly the pits. Swooping in 90 to 100 all the way in. And once we get over the runway, power's at idle. We're going to set the attitude and hold that nose up nice and high. 
Let the speed roll back. Don't let it land. Get that nose up till we get to uh, about 70 over the touchdown zone. And then hold it up and we'll touch down on the mains. And then pull a little wheelie after we land, actually. We touch down and let it decelerate with the nose in the air. And as it gets too slow to hold the nose up anymore, the nose will come down to the ground, roll out. And at that point, you can touch the brakes. Okay? So... I love flying this airplane. I think you're going to find that this is one of the best flying airplanes that ever, ever was uh, invented. My dad chose the Marchetti back in 1990 for our business called Air Combat USA. What I'm about to offer you in this portion of the, of the brief is the, what we've managed to do over COVID. I mean, and a lot of people like the, the bad mouth in the COVID, but really COVID was a great opportunity for us. And it gave us an opportunity to rethink the business. We've been in business for 34 years. We've flown air-to-air -air combat missions, dogfighting, and formation flying all over the country in 27 cities. So I believe that this business could do well in any major city in America. Now, during COVID, I've had to make some adjustments. And I had the opportunity to think, hey, what's, what's kind of a cool thing we can do with this business while we're operating in a single ship environment Due to the restrictions of, of, of you know, uh, pe people spacing together, we really didn't want to have 10 people in a room at the same time, right? So we thought, well, let's do some single ship. We went and watched the new movie Top Gun Maverick, and we thought, hey, look at what we can do with this Marchetti. Not only can it do the maneuvers that you see in Top Gun, and we, we do aerobatics with it. We are doing rolls. We're doing loops with it. We're doing, there goes our prop. We're doing a hammerhead. We're taking it straight vertical. We're stepping on the rudder. We're doing hammerheads. We're doing spins in this thing. We can even do air to ground strike, okay? So after watching the new movie Top Gun, I began adding a single ship air to ground package where we're using our, our tracking system, just like we were using for dogfighting, but now we're using it to strike ground targets. We call them our simulated uh, enemy positions, either a, a SAM site or a, uh, an enemy ship moving cargo, right? So we point the nose down at, a, at an enemy ship strafe or shoot simulated munitions at, at the target, get to a safe altitude of say 2,500 feet, and then pull off target and do a course reversal. And then you check and see how you did, right? So after COVID or during COVID, I was able to create a franchise that allows a single ship to brand the Marchetti under what we are currently doing and then allow this airplane to go on the road for us and be a represented representative of our brand in your city. So let's say you, you have or an interest or a desire to fly in Nashville, Tennessee. I can tell you what we did in Nashville, Tennessee, whether I think it'd be a good place for it to be. And of course, uh, this is up to you as a business owner. Is this where you want to be? Can you get a hangar for it? Can you get an office space set up there? And we'll help you sell missions at your location using the Air Combat brand and the 34 years of goodwill that we've had um, taking care of our passengers to this really high level. We're going to teach you how to do what we do using our franchise disclosure document. All the legalities are done. All of the safety is done. All of the modifications to the aircraft are done. This is a turnkey situation. So if you buy one of our Marchettis, which we have six of these things now, um, approximately 25% of the entire fleet of Marchettis that are in the United States, Air Combat USA is the owner of, and uh, will license the airplane to you. You buy the plane, license the brand to you, and you're going to be on your own in a new location with our support. This is a winner. So over COVID, I think we've come a long way and made, a, made some really cool improvements, making an opportunity so that you can own one of these really amazing, when you read the article on this, this accessible Exotica, this amazing Marchetti SF260, configured to, for it to be a business for you. So you can fly it, make money on the weekends. You could fly it full time if you choose to. You might fly a different job during the day. You might have a different career. You might, you might be you know, a business owner you know, doing a construction business. But uh, what I imagine is, is that a, a professional pilot who has the desire to own a Marchetti would buy one of these things with the licensing, with the branding, with everything dialed in and ready to go, and I'll help you become successful in a Air Combat USA franchise as a single ship operator. So if this sounds interesting to you, go ahead and give me a call. Send us an email. Uh, the numbers are and the, and the links are down below, so you can kind of find us. Uh, if you found this to be interesting, please subscribe to the channel. There'll be other stuff coming along for you know aviation-related things, but I wanted this specific uh, episode to be about the Marchetti, how it flies, what we're doing with it. I'm going to help you be successful in, in an ownership uh, role 
of a Marchetti SF-260 licensed and, and branded under the Air Combat USA brand. And uh, feel free to give me a call if you have any questions or comments. Please leave those down below. We'll be happy to answer. Uh, you've been watching Taking Flight with me. My name is Mike Rocket Blackstone, and we will see you in the next episode.